Hello, welcome to the Evergreen Rx. I'm your host, Hayden. I'm a licensed mental health therapist, Cancer Moon, first to get deep at any party. That's the bio I came up with. That's what we're sticking with. This is the mini dose. If you're not familiar, mini dose is where I answer questions, talk about trends, talk about anything that doesn't feel like it goes into a main dose. Um, Usually shorter, sweeter, off the cuff. So yeah, let's dive in. Today, I'm going to be answering a listener question. I'm just kidding. It's not a listener question. It is one that I found on the internet. Uh, But if you have a question, please ask it. Submit it. Send it to me somehow. I would love to answer your question. So I know this is kind of a new thing I'm doing this season. So maybe if you had a burning question you didn't know, there was a format to get it answered in, but there is. So I thought this question was great. Super excited to talk about it. Um, As a therapist, somebody asked, do therapists ever dislike or hate their clients? They said, my therapist owns her own practice. I've asked her so many times if she hates me. I've lost count. Each time she says no, but she never says she likes me or how she feels about me. I'm going to ask her next session, but feel like she's just forced to be nice to me. Whenever she suggests something, I constantly go against it, and everything she says, I do the opposite of. I feel so stupid and childish, and I feel like she hates me. Can therapists hate their clients? She also told me she talks about me during supervision a lot. That seems like a bad sign. So, I think this is, like, probably one of the most common questions clients wonder about their therapist. I would know, as I have also wondered a good few times what my therapist thinks about me, if she likes me, if I'm her favorite, things like that. Um, But I'll just go ahead, short answer, no, your therapist does not hate you. Obviously, there are bad apples in every job. So assuming your therapist is ethical seems kind, has been helpful, has, you know, seemed to make your life better by her or whoever it is being your life, then my answer is no. Your therapist does not hate you. There's always the potential in therapy that people are better matches, energetic matches. So not every client on a caseload is expected to be the best energetic match for that therapist's personality, for the way that they work, and everything. And that's not a problem. I have good, like, really great personality fits on my caseload, and I have people that are maybe more of uh, a newer personality or person for me to work with that are more of a stretch, a growth area. Maybe there's people that I thoroughly enjoy working with, but I wouldn't describe them as an energetic match. That is not a problem. I don't like any of those people more than the others because of that. It's just a difference. Good ethical therapist with healthy boundaries is not determining their favorability of clients the way that you would think of normally in your day-to-day life. Like, you know, when you meet a friend, maybe you're deciding like whether or not you like that friend as the person. Therapy doesn't work like that. This is, it's a job and we're also trained to be open and non-judgmental and curious with every person that comes into our office. It's not a matter of like what we think about them personally. It's a matter of listening, hearing what they want to work on, helping them achieve their goals and helping them heal. So it's already like in a totally different category. And I know that might seem kind of hard to understand if you're not a therapist, you're not in a position like this, Um, but you just have to keep in mind, like, my therapist brain, in terms of meeting new people, is very different than my, my Hayden just personal brain when I meet somebody new at, like, a party or something like that. So, something I thought was really good that this person asked or said was that they feel like they're constantly going against what their therapist is saying and they feel really childish and like maybe their therapist doesn't like them because they're not you know doing what the therapist is suggesting um this is super common this is why people are in therapy 
because it's hard to change. It's hard to break patterns. It takes time. There's resistance. There are blocks. Even the most well-intentioned attempt at change can still prove really difficult. Um, And your therapist knows that. They get it. They've probably been there too. Hopefully they've done their own therapy as well and they have their areas that are hard to change. So just because maybe they give you like a homework or like a little assignment in between sessions and you don't do it or you feel like you weren't successful uh, doesn't mean they're like sitting there thinking, huh, why did this person not do what I'm saying? Like, they're so lazy. Like, they they just can't get it together. It's like, no, they're not thinking that. They're like, okay, let's explore that. What is, wh- what feels challenging about it? Like, what is blocking you? What's, you know, is it working for you? Are we even on the right track? Like, they're going to get curious and explore it with you and uh, just see that as the next layer of the process. This person also mentioned that their therapist talks about them a lot in supervision. Supervision is something that all provisionally licensed therapists do, which basically the long and short of that is when you first get out of school, you have to get a certain amount of clinical hours, hours seeing people before you're given your full license where you're kind of out completely on your own. This is just a measure to make sure therapists are getting the proper training and are getting support. It's to make us better um, for the people that we're seeing, especially at that beginning stages of learning. So that's called supervision. Sometimes people meet in a group um, with other supervisees. Sometimes you just meet one-on-one with your supervisor who is somebody that is fully licensed, has more experience than you, and is able to teach you and mentor you through getting your hours. Um, But even once you're fully licensed, it just becomes peer consultation. It's just called something different, but it's still people other therapists getting together to consult on cases and clients and um, certain issues they're running into, certain personal issues that are cropping up in the therapy room and might be impacting their work. Um, It's just like a way for us to make sure we're doing the best that we possibly can and not missing any blind spots and just providing people with the best possible care because therapists, no one person can know everything about every issue. So you might have someone come in for the first time with a certain um, issue that they're working through and you'd go to your fellow therapist and while still remaining confidential, not giving away details of the client, you'd say like, oh, I'm working with, um, you know, health anxiety for the first time. What are some recommendations, some books, some podcasts? Like, what can I do here? How have you worked with that in the past? And you just kind of consult. So in terms of this person feeling like it might be a bad sign, that their supervisor is talking about them a lot, I would see that as maybe this person is, you know, a little bit in this therapist's growth zone. Um, And so they're trying to make sure that they're doing the best possible work that they can. I don't think that's a bad sign. Most therapists will talk about every single client on their caseload at some point during supervision um, because it's just problem solving, thinking out loud, processing out loud, Um, and getting support. And then the final piece I want to touch on in this question, which might be relevant to a lot of you out there listening, is about how when they ask their therapist if they hate them, that the therapist says no, but then does not say whether or not they like them or how they feel about them. There can be a lot of reasons for this. Maybe the therapist isn't super comfortable with that type of disclosure But most likely, it doesn't feel therapeutically relevant to talk about the therapist's personal feelings for the client. For example, with my therapist, I wonder if she likes me, like I said, if I'm her favorite, I've worked with her for a long time, I'm like, would you miss me if I stopped seeing you? Like, am I important in your life? Um... But she's never really disclosed that because part of my work is learning to rely less on what other people think about me, to trust in who I am and to feel secure in that. So it wouldn't really be the most therapeutically beneficial for her to be giving me reassurance about how she feels about me. Because also, 
if I knew she liked me and like she had these certain things that she really liked about me, she said, oh my God, you're just like so blah, blah, blah. And I love that. I would probably start to feel a little bit of that like performance feeling of like, oh, she likes me now. She likes that I'm funny. So now I have to be funny. And it kind of strips away some of that authenticity because one of my personal fears is someone not liking me anymore, me disappointing them, letting them down. So it is more helpful in our therapeutic relationship for her to be more reserved about how she feels about me. So potentially with this person asking the question or for you, if your therapist is not telling you how they feel, one, that's pretty normal. Like we're not really telling our clients like what we think about them. Um, But also it might be because it's more beneficial for you over time to start to realize that that doesn't matter in this relationship it's not that doesn't determine how worthy you are of getting the support and getting the care from your therapist that you can kind of bear it all and be vulnerable and open and be imperfect and your therapist will still care and still be there and have a lot of love for you you know that's sometimes the thought process behind and that's why therapists ask annoying questions like if you say, hey, do you like me? And they might be like, I'm wondering why you are are curious about that. And you're like, you can't answer my question with a question, but it's like, yes, we can. And we're trained to do that. And sometimes it is for, I mean, obviously, all the time you'd hope, it is for your benefit. It's not just to be annoying. It's not just to evade the question. It's not because they secretly hate you. Um, probably they really do want the best for you. And so they're trying to support you in the way that would be most beneficial in the long run. So I hope if you clicked on this because you're curious if your therapist hates you, this gave you a little bit more clarity on the inside of the therapist's mind. Um, And I'll also go to say, I have a lot of therapist friends and coworkers and stuff. I don't know anybody that hates any of their clients. Uh, And if they did, it would be something for the therapist to work on. It would be a personal mismatch or problem or trigger or um, what we call counter transference like transferring you know other issues on to the client that the therapist would be responsible for working on and if they couldn't if it wasn't going to match to refer you and, and help you find someone that is a good match for your best possible care so rest easy your therapist does not hate you they care about you Okay, well, I hope you liked this little short and sweet mini dose. Um, Like I said, send any questions you'd like to see me answer, hear me answer, um, or anything you'd like me to react to, to give my take on. I don't know. I'm open. It's mini dose. Quick, easy, hopefully a little bit uh, fun to listen to. So I will catch you in the next one, and I wish you... All the best. Bye.